Good evening, everybody. Uh, I hereby call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the select board. Um, it is currently 6.30 on 8 2023 First order of business will be to approve the minutes of our August 21st meeting. I will entertain a motion. All right, motion we approve the minutes. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing diff. All righty, uh, new business. First order of business is our trench permit policy. Yeah, so it came to my attention that I don't think that the policy we had on the books was exactly what was being followed. <laughs> um, so a after discussions, I, I guess the background is in 2009, the select board appointed the building commissioner and fire department to issue trench permits. Um, a month later, they added the board of health. Uh, the fire department said we have not done trench permits since the current fire chief has been there. He doesn't believe that they did it while he was the assistant chief. Um, the building commissioner said, yeah, I do trench permits. And the board of health said, if our agent can just say that a trench is okay for a title five, they don't, they don't want to be involved in any other type of trenches. Just if they're putting septic in, that would be great. Um, and the other thing was the amount of the fee. It was set at $25 in 2009. Um, right now, our lowest fee um, for a permit is $85, I think. So the recommendation would be that the building commissioner is the only person responsible for trench permits. Trench permit is $85. However, if it's a trench permit for uh, Title V, then the Title V agent can author, or, or can approve the trench. Okay, that makes sense. Question? Any discussion? How many trench permits do we do a year? Uh, not very many, which is why this hasn't come up earlier. Yeah. I mean, are we talking like under 10? Um, I, I think it depends on probably the Title Fives and how many sales, yeah. but I would say yes, under 10. We do them for footings and stuff like that. Do they? So it depends on DPM. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's mostly Title V. It's mostly Title V if there's a new sewer connection or something like that. Okay. Um. <coughs> but, like, and again, just out of curiosity, like when Eversource was putting in the trench to go down to do that, is that a permit? Uh, that would, yeah, I believe that would be You know what I mean? So, like, underground yeah. services, yep. electric, yep. water. And is there a separate one for road openings? For road, I yeah. Don't sometimes think if you think need, so, if you do it like if you question. need to tie to a train, like tie to the sewer on the road, they, they, we call it a road. We call them road opening permits, but it's just different. Sometimes yeah, I mean it's the, the same kind of thing. It's a yeah, trench. we check with the highway super if there if it, okay. there is going to be an impact on the road. Okay. Um, but it's a good point. Yeah, no problem. With it. I'm uncomfortable with yeah. the recommendation. I am too. Right. I will entertain a motion to approve the recommendation as stated by Jeff. So moved. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All righty. Uh, next up is uh, awarding the design contract for the pickleball courts. Yes. Tell us about that. So um, earlier this, well, let me step back. Town meeting um, appropriated. Blank on how much money they appropriate. Um, money for pickleball courts. Um, and so we went out and did a procurement for the design work to survey the ground, make sure it's flat, um, get estimates of probable cost. We figured it was going to be over 10,000, less than 50. So we solicited three written quotations. Um, we received two responses. Um, and the low bidder was William A. Cannon um, with a bid of 13,600. Um, and just so you know, it, w it includes a site survey, um, schematic design, then working you know, with the town to revise the design if it needs to be revised, uh, including a public meeting. Um, preparation of construction documents and specifications for the construction bidding, 
working with us through the bidding phase and construction administration, I think, for um, visits to the site during the construction time. So the recommendation would be to award the contract to the low bidder, um, William A. Cannon. So moved. Yeah, so as far as I know, there were issues. Some people think that it's a good idea to put it right behind this building. Some people didn't think that was a good location because of the noise. Is that going to, do we know the ex where this location is going to be for these pickleball courts? I think that we are going to, that is the primary location. We're mm -hmm. going to see if it's possible to fit them somewhere else. But I think that anywhere, the only other possible location in my head is right behind the houses on School Street. So, I, and I think that location would be closer to those houses than the location behind this building is to the houses on North Main. Mm -hmm. um, so we will look at, at alternatives and see if it's feasible, but um, they're mostly going to be looking at, at the space out here. Hmm. Is there any fencing proposed or anything? Can you talk about that at all? Fencing? We, I did say that they should be enclosed in a fence, but other than that, okay. Yeah. I mean, I assume it's going to be like a mesh, you know, four chain four length. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. And it's versus a wooden yeah. soundproof fencing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All right, I'll entertain a motion to award the bid to Cannon. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to award the bid to the lowest bidder, Cannon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right, that's it for new business. Next up, we have some old business. The first one being an ARPA request for Riverside Cemetery mowing. And I think it was last week we were talking about the mowing for the other properties and we asked the question of whether or not we were going to need more for the cemetery, and I guess the answer is yes, we do. Yes, the trustee said we would love it. <laughs> We'd <laughs> we love to have, have some a more, more um, What were they asking for, money-wise? So I, I am asking for a thousand. I had uh, reached out to Mr. Ahern and have not heard back yet, but I figured it was about a thousand for the four mows here, about a thousand at the school, and the cemetery is smaller, but it's more. Things obstacles so say up to a thousand. Yeah, and it comes in more than that great. And if yeah. not, you know, you can always come and back. And then if he gets back to you and says, "I don't need to do any extras there," then yeah, yep. then we get money. Always we can go back. Okay, um, any discussion on that or just we had that discussion last week already. All right, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Um, second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. Uh, for the ARPA request for Versailles Cemetery mowing for up to a thousand dollars. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All right. Next up is select board updates. Um, I don't have a lot. I just wanted to just say uh, today I was driving over here, following behind a tractor pulling uh, tobacco, and very slowly looking out the window at the beautiful fall landscape, and just thinking about man, we live in a gorgeous part of the world. Um, <laughs> so I know it's beautiful all year round, but it's especially beautiful today, and I wanted to just say that. Um, anyone else have anything they want to bring up? I got, I got one actually. I want to take a couple minutes too. <laughs> I've been, uh, uh, let's see, before I joined the board in my regular job, I spent a lot of time thinking about bike networks and roads and all that kind of stuff. And I think about that for 116. I also went to UMass and I used to live in North Village, which is the married student housing in the back. And there's an old maintenance road that goes down in the back and come, pops out of the model center. So kind of get the gears get going and started thinking about kind of a shared use path that would come from here all the way to there if it could sneak through the back through to UMass. So I started emailing just to the camp. I know that some of the guys over there at facility planning. I know the town engineer in the Amherst. So I was just kind of fishing for ideas and floating this thing as, as a possibility. So um, and I mentioned it to Jeff a little bit just you know since I've been on the board. Um, and UMass, I, I, I don't, I, I can be a pest, so I, I was, <laughs> I was a pest to numerous people at UMass. Well, I think we also know somebody <laughs> who was in the facilities department there, or like yeah, that, you know, yeah, we possibly do. might go a little. We do. So anyway, um, on that end of things, um, it, it, as you know, it basically comes up the west side of UMass, mm -hmm. maintenance road, by the University Village, which was old North Village, and there's an electric easement that keeps going. It goes over a couple small creeks and then pops out right at Meadow Street. From Meadow Street, Mass DOT has a huge, a big right-of-way all the way to the Sunderland line, and then it's still pretty big 
all the way to town. There's one neck down in Bull, Bull Hill, in next town about 60 feet, but that's the narrowest it ever gets. So there's room to do something. I'm, I'm not a big fan of just paint only bike lanes. So I, I kind of push towards find something separated. Um, if you can put it on, uh, you know, on a curb, that's even better. Um, so basically coming through town and then whatever we do in the village center, you know, work our way through that. Mm -hmm. But then over the bridge and then ultimately to Sugarloaf. I mean, it's a beautiful corridor. And you've got the Norituck Trail, which already is there in Hadley mm -hmm. and Amherst and comes all the way to UMass. So it seems like a natural, a natural piece to make a new connection, bring it to Franklin County. So it's a long-term big thing that would take, you know, take decades or a long time. I mean, the, the bike path that leads from Amherst to Northampton is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Oh yeah, I've, it's been around since I was a child. Oh, I know, I know. It and yeah. you know, I think it's a, it's a great idea. Um, if we can link into, you, if we can link UMass to Sunderland, all yeah. the better for, um, you know. People being able to enjoy themselves and sure, and, and all the so. students they could commute, they could do parking, they could do parking ride lots. You could actually build a lot like just north of Metal Street. You could put a parking lot in there. Mm -hmm. People who wanted to drive and then get on their bike or walk could do that too. I mean, it's a there's a lot of possibilities. Anyway, it's a long term thing. It's a DOT control road to yeah. control the roadway. So they obviously have to you know weigh in. It's their road. They can decide. But I'm trying to just get them to think about planning for this corridor. Uh, they have a healthy policy, healthy transportation directive, which says they need to, whenever they do upgrades, they need to think about all users of all abilities, you know, in all comforts, not just the guy who like, likes to race his bike down the road. It's, it's everybody, the kids mm -hmm. and grandma and everybody else. If you have a nice, safe shared use path, you know what the path's like to Amherst and Northampton. You get a ton of people and oh, yeah. through East Hampton, we, yeah, get, we get huge use right through town. Yeah, and I mean, even, it's just great to be able to park behind the mall and even just yeah. Even if you have small kids, it's yeah. just a nice controlled place to. Well, and I know that there's already people who come to park here from out of town, from Greenfield and surrounding towns, to walk around our river park area. Yeah. And so if we can connect that area into and, a and larger the, network, and the sugar wolf and all that, and, hey, maybe they're gonna it would be great. Go to when they're done, or maybe they're gonna stop at the corner store for an energy drink. You know, there's it's definitely yeah something to think about. All right, sure. I get a little more <laughs> as I've learned about this. I've learned kind of quietly the. DOT's planning a bridge project, mm -hmm. but it sounds like it's going to be low key. It's to, I haven't they haven't got it officially yet, and they're going to roll it out at some point. But I think it's just uh, kind of a paving job, and then maybe with some paint. Because they have right now this 40 feet from curb to curb, you get two 12 foot lanes and two um, shoulders of eight feet. So they may they may just put you know five foot lanes on the edges, but I just think about the people who are going to ride up that, and not not that many. Well, they'll get in the sidewalk, but. Um, so I'm trying to encourage them to do more. I sent up some sketches. I'll, I'll give them to you after. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I'm just hoping if I you know, keep keep reaching out. And the last thing I'll say is, I did. I met Trevor McDaniel, one of the select board members, because it's their bridge, and most of the bridges in Deerfield. So I reached out to him just to tell him what I was thinking about. And they he's supportive, and they think it's a good idea. So it's just kind of a good thing that we could all think about and encourage mm -hmm. well, both the UMass that we'll be meeting with. Tony at some point soon as a, as a communications director, a communications, he's a communications uh, person yeah. there who's, who's willing to talk to us. And today, I just learned, I went on to a shared use kind of mass dot web page that shows what their plans and they sh actually showed that link at UMass on there for planning phase. So at least it seems like it's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, any support, any thoughts you guys have is great. Oh, yeah. And I'll just keep, right. keep working yeah. at it. I love the idea and I also, you, you you brought something up that I wanted to just highlight, which is that um, I'd like us to, in general, try and be more active with other select boards in the area because we so much of what we do is tied to Deerfield. So much of what we do is tied to Waitley and Conway and um, in Amherst and yeah. you know what's happening in a couple of days. You mass move in. Does that affect us? Of course it does. So um, just in general, I think it'd be good for us to try to you know have more communication with the other select boards in the area. So yeah. I'm glad to hear that you're talking to them. All right, I got one last fast, a fun fact for you. Did you know that the Sunderland Bridge is the highest daily traffic in all of Franklin County first, besides Jane State? And if you include Hampshire County, it's number five. It gets more traffic on the bridge than any section of Route 9, mm -hmm. except for the Coolidge Bridge. So we, have the we have more and more on here than any, any section oh, of Route 9. Yeah. Well, maybe not during graduation, but <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. That's exciting.
have another bridge, <laughs> just to tell you the truth. It really would be. Another bridge? Yeah. I know. That'll never <laughs> happen. <laughs> you, you, need one, you need one over into Hatfield. 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 I heard there was, heard no, was a plan for that. You didn't even mention that well, in no, Hatfield, though. Like people would come with pitchforks and are like, you <laughs> keep your bridges away from us because they don't want to have it's not traffic. another one in Sunderland, but from Northampton to Sunderland, that's a long nine, ways. Nine, yeah. nine miles, yeah, yeah. All right. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Crystal, you're all set for... I'm all set. I have all right. nothing this week. Jeff? Uh, uh, please. No, you... Well, sort of. You mentioned UMass coming back, and elementary, secondary schools are starting to this week, so um, be wary of the school buses out if you're driving in the mornings and afternoons. Um, school starting again. That's all I got. Uh, and yes, and I know it's frustrating for everyone for there to be so many um, moving vans and everything like that, and people moving into apartments and houses and whatnot. But um, a big part of what makes Sunderland unique is all the students. So let's all let's all try and be patient with them as they move in this weekend. Sorry, there's one more thing that, it, which is I think last week we talked a little bit about the COVID um, alert level, and just anecdotally, I've been hearing a lot of people saying, hey, I got COVID. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem to be hitting people quite as bad, though hospitalizations are on the rise. So just wanted to mention, since we do have an audience, that um, you know, be, be careful. Um, there's going to be a lot more people in our community with UMass coming back, and um, it seems to be ticking up. So, so um, there are, I think, I think California put a mask, maybe not mandate, but an advisory back on. So people are looking around the country at, at maybe reinstituting some some measures. So just wanted to mention it. We're, I, we are not, I don't think there's any recommendations right now, but... Um, but good to be keeping it in mind. And, yeah. and also, as we mentioned last week, good for people who have family members who are immunocompromised or themselves immunocompromised or otherwise have heart conditions and whatnot. Um, good just to be aware of it and you know take precautions if you feel right for you and your family. All right, that it for you? That's it. All right. Anything else from anyone before we wrap up? All right, hearing nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you.